For the last 76 years, the northern half of the Korean Peninsula has been ruled by a dictatorial regime that is also hereditary. Today, North Korea has been isolated from the majority of the rest of the world and is considered a prison for its own citizens who are refused most of their rights. Welcome to Nutty History. Today, we're exploring the story of the Kim Dynasty that rules North Korea with absolute authority. The Leader Who Became the Sun by 1945, Korea had been under Japanese rule for some 35 years. With Japan's surrender in the Second World War, Korea was also liberated. In theory, the Koreans, as subjects of the Japanese emperor, enjoyed the same status as the Japanese. But in fact, the Japanese government treated the Koreans as a conquered people. Under Japanese rule from 1910 to 1945, Koreans struggled to maintain their culture. The Japanese banned the teaching of the Korean language and history and burned many historical documents. Koreans were forced to take Japanese names and to speak and teach in the Japanese language. Many Korean farmers were forced off their lands while others had to fulfill grain quotas for Japan's needs. Buildings were taken over for Japanese military and government purposes, and Korean businesses were handed over to Japanese bureaucrats. Koreans who fled to Manchuria formed resistance groups known as the Trong Ni Gun, the Liberation Army, to carry out guerrilla attacks against Japanese forces. But when Japan annexed Manchuria as well, most of these resistance groups fled deeper into China or to communist Russia. One of these communist rebels, Kim Il-sung, rose through the ranks to become the leader of the resistance against the crushing occupation of Korea by Japan. He worshipped Soviet Supreme Leader Stalin like a god and desired to be his living image in Korea. After the Second World War, like Germany, Korea too was divided into two, with one part each given to the West and the other to Soviet Russia to do as they wished. While Germany was punished for its contribution to the war, Korea was simply a piece of cake, or rather two, that were distributed between the victors. Kim Song-ju renamed himself Kim Il-sung after being trusted by Stalin to rule northern Korea. But Kim Il-sung wasn't looking to do only Soviet Russia's bidding in North Korea. He wanted to be his own version of Joseph Stalin for Korea. In fact, he wanted to be a lot more. Kim Il-sung hired historians and ghostwriters to create a new mythology of North Korea where he wasn't just North Korea's founding father, but a living God, a ruler ordained by the heavens. He took inspiration from one of the earliest kingdoms in the Korean Peninsula, the Kojosan Dynasty. The Kojosan Dynasty had established their ancient capital closer to modern Pyongyang, unlike most of the other historically significant kingdoms that chose the region of Seoul as their capital. Similar to the myth about Kojosan's founding monarch, Kim Il-sung's biographers made the supreme leader's birth divine, detailing that Kim Il-sung descended from the heavens at the holy Mount Pektu that separates Korea from China. Even today, his grandson, Kim Jong-un, who too is religiously revered across North Korea as a god, periodically makes a journey to Mount Pektu to have himself photographed in various idolizing poses such as a warrior, a philosopher, a visionary, and a carer to appear divine in the country's propaganda. This is why when the signs of famine began to show up and the food started getting scarce across the entire nation in the 1990s, the Kim Jong-il regime didn't prioritize feeding the hungry as three million starved to death. Instead, they prioritized the multi-million dollar renovation of the Kunsu San Memorial Place to place the embalmed body of Kim Il-sung for display as the country's eternal president. They also created a new calendar for the nation that was the birth of North Korea coinciding with the birth of Kim Il-sung. The Divide and Rule Policy of Kims Kim Il-sung established an authoritarian system in North Korea where the government was given full reign over deciding how North Koreans would live their lives, and they got absolute and unrestrained power to crush dissent and counterculture. From then on, Kim Il-sung and his hereditary successors used this power to abduct, eliminate, and exile anyone who voiced their opposition to the Mount Pektu dynasty's right to rule North Korea. He also cultivated a sect of sycophants by demanding absolute loyalty to him in the likes of Joseph Stalin, Mao, Hitler, Commodus, and Saddam Hussein. He encouraged the culture of Kim Il-sung as North Korea, and North Korea is Kim Il-sung. Under his command, his followers systematically abolished the concept of the free press, free trade unions, free thinking in art or entertainment, and any other sort of liberal privileges that would be considered basic human rights in any democratic or republic country that is run by its own people. A political control system that was also used by Mao in China and Pol Pot in Cambodia. As Kim Il-sung consolidated his rule and divinity over North Korea, he established the Songbun system that became the social structure of the country. The North Korean population is divided into core, wavering, and hostile classes under the Songbun. 
The hostile class makes up 27% of the North Korean population, and it includes descendants of the criminals, kin to defectors, intellectuals, landowners, those who dare to raise their voices against the Mount Peg 2 dynasty, and former supporters of Japan's occupying government during the Second World War. Kim Il sung relocated them to the country's most remote and impoverished northern region. The Korean War was Kim Il sung's attempt to reunify Korea under his rule, which he deliberately attempted despite Stalin's hesitation about backing this bold move of aggression. Now, eventually, after hundreds of thousands of Korean lives were lost, America and its allies lost thousands of soldiers as well, and the Chinese army managed to save the supreme leader of North Korea and his government. The armistice reinstated that the peninsula would stay divided. Kim Il-sung rewarded the core loyalists with the perks of being allowed to live in the capital city of Pyongyang, which is most likely the only developed region of the country. These people also get prioritized when it comes to housing, food, medical services, education, and employment. The wavering class was made up of artisans, traders, shopkeepers, those who were repatriated from China, and certain descendants of intellectuals from Japan. They only get employed as low-class technicians and are closely monitored by the police state. Moving up the class is almost next to impossible, but falling out of favor can happen any time. Many are demoted if they are even accused of a crime, or even if their distant relatives try or succeed to flee out of the country. But there are exceptions, scandalous exceptions. While North Korea is one of the most bigoted and segregating countries in the modern world, where things like having a mixed ancestry or marrying outside your social class would hamper one's social ranking for generations, there is the matter of Kim Jong-un. The current supreme leader of Korea was born out of wedlock, and his mother was a half-Korean, half-Japanese descendant of a hostile class family. The Blood on the Family Tree Apart from the fact that Kim Jong-un was born out of wedlock between Kim Jong-il and Ko Yong-wi, he was also third in the line of succession after his elder brother, Kim Jong-chul, and the eldest half-brother, Kim Jong-nam. Kim Jong-nam was also born out of wedlock, but had a different mother. However, Kim Jong-il exiled Kim Jong-nam after the former was arrested at Narita International Airport for having a fake passport. When Kim Jong-il learned that his heir apparently caused this embarrassment by trying to visit Tokyo Disneyland, he soon changed his mind and had Kim Jong-un succeed him instead. While Kim Jong-chul settled for an inferior position in the Workers' Party of Korea, Kim Jong-nam had to leave North Korea and live incognito until someone injected him discreetly with a nerve agent in 2017 at Kuala Lumpur International Airport to take care of him. The crazy part? Two women who were accused and found guilty of orchestrating it had no idea what they were doing and pleaded that they were under the impression of performing a prank for a TV show. There were four North Koreans present at the airport when the incident happened, and immediately they boarded a flight to Pyongyang before anybody realized what had happened. This removal is thought to have been the result of a claimed coup against Kim Jong-un, allegedly funded by a neighboring country. Kim Jong-nam and Jang Song-tek, the brother-in-law of Kim Jong-il, was reportedly involved in a scheme to have Kim Jong-un replaced by Kim Jong-chul, his older brother. Jang Song-tek was dragged from the National Assembly and publicly eliminated by Kim Jong-un in 2012. Kim Jong-un then ordered the eradication of Jang's entire bloodline, including the children and kin of his aunt. The aunt surprisingly survived the purge, but there have been speculations about her well-being. Kim Jong-un had continued the methods that worked for his grandfather, regularly purging his administration of people he couldn't trust to the best. Room 39, The Mafia State North Korea has abducted many internationals over the years who are then forced to become translators, wives, or double agents. According to a report, the North is holding residents of a number of European and Asian countries. There may be hundreds of abductees inside North Korea who are not known to be there. Karu Hasuke and his then-girlfriend, now-wife, were among the 17 people who were recognized by the Japanese government as victims of North Korean abductions in the 70s. Hasuke still can't remember the reason why they were abducted apart from that it was supposed to help the unification of Korea. David Lewis Snedden, an American student, disappeared in 2004 in Yunnan, China, and was speculated to be abducted by North Koreans to teach English to Kim Jong-un. Sometimes, the abductions were simply a means to accomplish identity theft or espionage. At least 18 North Korean diplomats were caught smuggling rhino horns in ivory, and the actual number of such revelations could be five to six times higher. A secret office of the North Korean government called Room 39 is responsible for conducting criminal activities to maintain North Korea's supreme leader's slush fund of foreign currency, basically his pocket money to acquire cognacs, Rolex watches, and Mercedes-Benz cars. This office commits international addictive chemical smuggling, counterfeiting currency bills of U.S. dollars, and counterfeiting pharmaceuticals. One of the most recent infamous operations conducted by North Korean hackers was against Sony Pictures. The estimates are rough, but the country that has severely limited access to electronics and the internet for its citizens 
happens to have an army of hackers to rake in millions of dollars through crypto scams, phishing, blackmailing, and breaking into the digital vaults of major banks. In the 21st century, police investigations about illegal addiction trades in Southeast Asia, Taiwan, and Japan have revealed links to North Korea with possible involvement of Room 39. 20 different countries have apprehended North Koreans using diplomatic visas to smuggle, let's just say, some pretty bad stuff. Clearly, we have not covered nearly every atrocity committed by North Korea because a lot of them are just too crazy and heinous for this platform. North Korea, the Lord of War Kim Jong-un is obsessed with developing or acquiring nuclear warheads. In 2012, Kim Jong-un announced that he plans to put 180 nukes on his new short-range ballistic missiles and increase the number of nuclear warheads in the country to 500. He further insisted that North Korea is not seeking war, but the nuclear warheads are a part of them building the defense arsenal to deter possible invasions from the U.S., South Korea, and Japan. Despite being one of the poorest countries on planet Earth, North Korea is considered armed to the teeth. For a country that is starving to collapse and doesn't have enough energy to produce electricity for 24 hours a day, most of its finances are concentrated in its war effort. The jobs at the missile program are advertised as the most prestigious jobs in the country. It is quite possible that all of these claims could be hollow. However, it is true that to make arms, they sell arms, mostly to groups that have caused the world strife and pain. They also have Russia and China as their customers. North Korea is suspected of supplying arms to countries like Iran, Eritrea, Syria, Myanmar, Ethiopia, Pakistan, and Somalia, despite international sanctions. But we do thank you for watching Nutty History, and we would love for you to like and share this video to support us in making more videos like this one. Also, do subscribe to find and watch more of our videos. Thanks for watching Nutty History, and we'll see you next time.